In this screencast, I would like to talk about request tracking, which is a powerful feature for analyzing performance problems in multi-threaded programming and parallel programming. It connects call sites to execution sites, which means that JProfile understands how certain tasks are shifted from one thread to another. And I'm going to explain this with a concrete example. So let's start the JDBC demo session that is included with JProfiler. The JDBC demo session includes an HSQL server and the code in the demo session submits multiple long-running tasks to an executor with a thread pool. So let's start some database activity here and go to the CPU views and start recording CPU data. In the thread selector you can see the threads that belong to the HSQL server as well as the threads that belong to the executor thread pool. Let's select the first thread here and open the call tree a little further and what you can see is that there are SQL statements being executed here and what we're interested in is to find out what part of our application is responsible for submitting this task to the executor and that's where request tracking comes in. So we click on the start tracking toolbar button and it brings up the request tracking settings dialog and it shows us a list of subsystems that JProfiler understands in the context of request tracking. The first one is the one we're, we're dealing with here, executors, that's in the Java Util concurrent package. There's also request tracking for AWT events, for SWT events, and for plain thread starts, where starting a new thread is considered as handing off a calculation to a background thread. So we select the executors request tracking and click on OK. And right away nothing much happens because there are no new tasks being submitted to the executor so we have to go back to this control window stop the database activity and restart it so the tasks are resubmitted and what we see here is that a new node has been added to the call tree this is the execution site which shows us the execution of this task separately from all the other uh, methods that have been executed by this thread the execution site has a hyperlink that takes us right back to the call site. So if we click on it, we're taken to the AWT event dispatch thread and the call site is highlighted. The call site has this particular icon with a blue flag pointing to the right hand side and it also has a hyperlink that takes us to the execution site. Actually, in this case, there are multiple execution sites because there were multiple tasks being submitted to the executor. So if we click on the hyperlink, we get the execution site dialog where we can choose between all detected execution sites. This is the execution site that we originally came from. So just as an example, let's choose the second thread in the thread pool. So we're taken to that thread. And if we open the execution site node here, we'll find out that this is uh, pretty much the same as the first thread in the executor thread pool. Request tracking settings are persistent, so if you stop the session and restart it, request tracking settings will be remembered. And in the session startup dialog, you can use this button to change request tracking settings so that you have request tracking right from the beginning.